Joining us now, she's entering her fifth season as the head coach at, at Oregon. Uh, speak of Coach uh, Missy Lombardi joining us. Does it seem like it's been five seasons? Has it gone quick or long? Um, A little bit of both. A little bit of both. But to look and go, I'm now entering my fifth season. It, wow, that's gone fast for sure. What have you learned about yourself and how do you think you're different today than you were when you took the job? Well, I, I think one, just more experienced. Obviously, I'm in my fifth year, you know, as a head coach where I was in my first year, first time head coach. So I think you just with anything that you do, you learn, you learn how to do things maybe a little bit different, a little bit better. Um, I think I've got a great team uh, that communicates really well and provides good feedback for us. Um, I think I have a tremendous staff as well. And so I really enjoy coming to work every day with this group. I look back at last year. I remember when you would do the media availabilities, it was always seemed like a more of a medical update. It seemed like you had injuries every week. You get to a regional final before obviously losing a great Arkansas team. When you look back at last year, what comes to your mind? You know, I just, what I think about is just, I think of our first year and just trying to survive. We didn't even know if we were going to have enough players and just watching this team evolve each year and go from survival mode to, to competitors. And I, I really loved what this team did last year. Um, we had to fight through some adversity. We had to fight through some injuries, but that's a part of it. You just have to figure it out. Um, I thought we had some different athletes that really stepped up last year. I love uh, Stevie Hansen, I think as a young freshman, just got thrown into the fire. And I love how she handled herself. Um, I loved what Coach Martyr did with our offense. Um, I was really pleased with Coach Reagan and our defense. It was just kind of cool to see everything come together. Do you feel in a way, considering all the adversity from the injury front, I mean, you never had the roster you thought you would have, let's be real, with all the injuries you had at one point. Do you feel like in a way you almost overachieved considering all the obstacles that was put in front of you? Yeah, you know, um, the one thing that I really love this about this team, and we've been this way since day one, is just the versatility. And I'm so thankful for our versatility because I think if we didn't have that, it, it – it would have been a struggle last year. I don't think we could have accomplished some, you know, we didn't have Tara the entire year, but we've got a lot of versatile athletes and other athletes that were, you know, next man up, ready to step up and, and continue competing. So um, I, I really like that versatility and I like that um, mentality that we had. You mentioned Hanson. Obviously, she'll be one of your leaders on the pitching staff. We made some news recently uh, with adding uh, Elise, obviously, from UConn in the pitching staff. Just talk about adding her and adding some of the new faces as well on the pitching staff that will go along with the returners. Yeah, yeah we just recently added Elise. Um, it's, it's interesting because we got to play against Elise and also Morgan when we went to North Carolina last year. So, that was a huge weekend for us. I felt like we figured a lot of things out as a team, um, but then also, you know, got the opportunity to play both. Uh, what I really like about Elise is I love how hard she throws, like how she can change speeds. Um, but I, I just, I like her competitive nature. I, I really like how she owns the mound. And you could just see last year from the beginning of the year as a freshman for her, just how much growth she had from the beginning to the end. So I, I I think of her a lot like Stevie, just being thrown into the fire, got a ton of innings, you know, was the one that had the ball, especially, you know, towards the end of the season. Well, and, and then you got Morgan Scott from Grit. She also threw a lot of innings there. So you've got some pitchers that can have are used to carrying the load and now are joining together in a staff. Yes. Morgan Scott, I would tell you the exact same thing, except she's just an elder. She's older, you know, she's got more years under her belt, but same thing. She throws the ball really hard, has great late movement, um, has been in tough situations, has gotten herself out of jams, has, you know, put in, um, just understands how to compete and can compete against the best. So you look at those, those three in the innings that they had together, you know, individually, and now to have the opportunity to share them and take a little bit of that load off them as individuals, I think will go a long way. 
I also think with uh, Reagan and with Allison and what, what they are going to bring this year as well, I think it really allows us to have a complete pitching staff. Deepest uh, staff maybe you've had with experience and, and, and quality depth wise. You feel that's the deepest you've had since you've been there? Yes, that's I do. You mentioned obviously the transfer portal. You, you and many coaches have had to learn this on the fly. You had to learn how to be a head coach and the transfer portal all at the same time. What has that been like now that we're, you know, the years amount that we've been involved? Because it's obviously changed college athletics to some extent. Uh, how have you adapted to that? I think that's all you can do is adapt. You know, I, I obviously early on didn't understand it really well, wasn't familiar with it. And then I got familiar with it extremely quick. Um, I've had some, I've gotten some, you know, gained some great players because of it. I've also lost players because of it. You know, I think it's probably for coaches. It's kind of a love hate type of deal, but, um, it's just, it is what it is, you know? So you just understand what it is and, and how can it, you know, best serve us and help us. So offensively mentioned Sam Martyr took over last year, hit two ninety six as a team scored a lot of runs. Give me your thoughts on, first of all, kind of the staff building you know your is that chemistry you've talked about having that staff chemistry with the staff with Nikki and Sam and all that now another year together and then obviously the improvements on offense and defense there there was so much learning like one I think I've got a tremendous staff you, you also have Alyssa Palomino Cardoza to add in there as well um and then we added on Mariah Lopez um as a graduate assistant so I, I am thankful, blessed to to be able to work with the the women that I work with on a day to day basis. They're um, they're excellent on and off the field, and I think last year it was just a lot of learning. You know, learning new systems for our athletes, um, for us as coaches, learning how to work with each other, and and then how to make everything you know our own product, and then put it, it to the athlete. There was just a lot of learning, and I think you had to have put a lot of time in it, have some patience with it. Um, but then you got to see some really cool things happen quickly last year. Really cool things. So you mentioned the addition of Mariah. How does she, will she help your staff and obviously help you as run as the pitching staff? Yeah, I think with her, uh, what I love about Mariah is that I coached Mariah. Um, she's worked under me. So she just has that experience. She has the knowledge. Um, she won a national championship. Um, she's also played in the pack. And so I just think she can really provide a lot of information to our, to our team, which, which she already has, you know, just, she understands it. She gets it. She was a student athlete. And um, I think they, they enjoy that. They, they can ask her questions that, you know, that they wouldn't ask me, you know, um, they would ask her. So I, I think she's going to do great. She's, she has um, got here and has just been quick to take off running with everything. So I, I'm pleased with what she's doing. And I think she's going to help us tremendously. All of them, all of your staff has played uh, <laughs> at the highest level, achieved a lot. I would imagine that's not by action as you envision your staff as far as relating to your players uh, with players that have been there, done that, and, and know what each player, student athlete goes through. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, my first year I had a group of athletes that have never anything, you know, they were all brand new. And so it's about bringing coaches in that have played at the highest level that have played in the pack from weekend to weekend. And it's, it's a, you know, crazy super regional type atmosphere that you're feeling um, that are going to have to face tough pitchers every, you know, on Friday, on Saturday, on Sunday, just they understand um, how to compete. They understand the pressures that come with it. They understand the um, communication, the leadership, you know, as players that they had to provide. So to be able to take all that information from our coaches and to surround our athletes with that, I, I think it's been awesome to see the growth and how, how quickly we have grown as a program. Pretty competitive staff too. I would imagine those, those competitive athletes, those juices don't go away just because they're joining as a coach, right? You all no, have that competitiveness. They, no, they do not go away at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, talk about your offense. Who are some of the leaders you're expecting from a production standpoint as well as your leadership standpoint? 
Yeah, you know, well, we have our our top seven return uh, returning hitters are all back. I mean, this is a veteran team, a veteran team in all areas. But I think of the unbelievable start that Tara McGowan had last year and then, you know, had to deal with that injury. And then after her injury, just continued where she left off from. Uh, I think you're going to see her more explosive this year. I think you'll see high batting average, but I think you're going to see her more explosive this year. I love um, how aggressive she is on the base path. Um, she's all about driving runners in. And I think she just has the experience to be in those high pressure moments and, and come up clutch. I feel the same way about Allie Bunker. Um, you know, her and, and Tara have been here since day one and have been thrown in the fire since day one and have just both continued to really work on their craft. I mean, they could, with what they're doing, I feel like they could have been like, okay, I'm good um, because they're playing at a high level. But I think they wanted to continue to see uh, how elite that they can be each year. How much better can they get? And you see that and then the amount of things that they're doing in the summer and how they're going about their fall. They just they really understand what they need to do to be able to play at a high level. And I think you're going to see some explosive, a little more explosiveness from Bunk as well. Uh, Hannah Delgado, you know, I love um, how she led off for us last year. Um, triple threat can do a lot of different things for us, you know, depending on what the game is calling for, which I like. I like that I can send her. I think she had the most stolen bases in the pack last year. So on the base path, we're able to send her. Um, Ariel Carlson, you think of the year before, she had one home run and then worked her butt off all summer, two summers ago. Came back in in great shape, really um, in a great mindset and understanding what she needed to do and she hit 15 this past season and i i would expect to see some more from her as well so i i don't know i i really like i mean i have some others too but i just i really like what our lineup is doing and i thought they learned quickly with um coach martyr um last year and what's nice this fall is it's not like having to start all over again and learn they they understand that they've got the foundation under them so we were able to start at a much higher spot and, and take off this fall offensively. And being in year two, too, under her system, uh, that's yeah. also going to help. But usually a, a big jump comes even that second year. For sure. And I, I'm really um, expecting our offense to really take off this, this year. I, I am. I think we're going to see some big things from all of them. When you look, you talked about the versatility on your team. With a player like Tara, do you decide to play her in one position? Do you try to protect her and maybe DP her? What's your philosophy with a player like Tara who's coming off an injury per leg season? Do you Does that make you rethink about, hey, maybe we should be extra cautious in how we, where we play her and things like that? Or, or you play her as planned? Yeah, no, I, I think you have to, you know, especially as athletes, they get older and they, they're getting later into their careers. Just things change a little bit. Um, I love what she does behind the plate and I know you'll see her behind the plate. Do I think you'll have opportunity to see her just in a DP role as well? For sure. Um, you cannot go um, a whole season with just one catcher behind the plate. And I love that we've got a, a good group of uh, catchers that can get behind there and not just have to depend on one. I thought Val was exceptional last year in, in what she did. And I expect some really good things from her as well. So I think that's what's ex exciting is that just last year and everything that these guys did and then all of them returning, you know, we know what we're going to get from them, but I think we're going to get that much more as well. Sounds like with all the adversity, the injuries and everything last year that you learned and a lot of the players learned a lot about themselves last year that you think will pay off now this year, having gone through that and that experience. For Absolutely. I do. I do. When you look at, obviously, uh, this team's defense, how do you feel about your defense going into this season? Yeah, I, I thought they were really, really steady last year. Um, you know, I think you're, you think of defense and defense wins championships. And you've got to be able to rely on your defense. I think for you to be able to have a pitcher on the mound does, that doesn't feel like she has to get every out and she can rely on her defense allows her and the rest of them to relax and throw and not feel like that they have to be perfect. Um, our defense was the tops in the pack last year. 
and um, we're very prideful in our defense. You know, Coach Reagan was an All-American shortstop here. She's very, very prideful in our defense, whether it's in the infield or the outfield. I think she puts a lot of time into understanding, you know, different shifts and how we want to play our defense comparable to who's at the plate, but then also who's on the mound. And she's risky, and I, I like that. Feels like your staff gelled maybe even quicker than you maybe intended. It seemed like gelled right away from day one. Is that a fair assessment as far as just the staff gelling there from that standpoint with Nikki coming in and helping the defense there, Sam coming in with the offense, and all of you just kind of seemed to fit? We did. We we did. We gelled really quick. And I think one thing that I, I really love about the staff and even our athletes is that I think we all understand the people side of this and how important it is and that you've got to put time into each other, not just practice time, but you got to put, you know, time into your relationships. And the staff was really eager to do that. And so, so has this, this team. So I think that goes a long way for us. And people are buying into your vision. I know recently x rating softball announced you had the 13th best signing class in the country, another strong signing class after last year's signing class. Just talk about that too, from a recruiting standpoint, because now we're starting to see your players coming in and buying into the vision that you have at Oregon. Yeah, for sure. I, I've had a vision since the first day that I got here. You know, I, it's uh, what this program has done and all the, the Pac-12 championships that have been won here and postseason. Um, but we're missing a national championship. I, I want to come here and be a part of that. And I want athletes that want to come be a part of the first national championship. And I want a coaching staff that wants to be a part of that vision as well. So, you know, you think of that vision for me, it has not changed. Has my journey looked a little different from when I first got here uh, to now? For sure. But that, you know, that's the journey that I'm supposed to be going on. And I, I, um, I don't know, I can't say enough about this team. We, we had a really, really good fall. This, this group, it's just, you know, when you have a team that's veteran and they're older as coaches, the best thing that we can do is get out of their way. Interesting. So right? that, that, yeah, no, that's fair. So it feels like it's a team too. That sounds like it's motivated that you don't have to say much in the fall that they, they, you know, they know they're that close uh, yeah. to accomplishing all the goals they want is out there for them. Uh, it sounds like you don't have to do as much coaching maybe as you did when you first got there. Is that fair? Yes, for sure. Like they, they understand the vision. Our visions are the same. Um, they're experienced, they're motivated, they're hungry, they're competitive. Um, you know, we lost to the regional last year that doesn't sit well with them, doesn't sit well with any of us. And I think that's, that drove them into the summer to really um, get after it into the summer and see that, you know, what we did, we, we did some good things last year, but it wasn't good enough. So what are we going to do this summer? That's going to take us into the fall. That's going to take us into this next season. And you can see a great commitment from these guys. How much motivation too? the Pac-12 had a great postseason last year. Arizona got to the World Series. UCLA got to the World Series. Oregon State got to the World Series. And I think the sense I got is that there was a lot of pride for them, the Pac-12. They're saying, hey, we're still as good of a league as any in the sport. And they proved it in the postseason. I would imagine that's also a driving influence as motivation for your players seeing that. It's like, hey, we could be that team and get to OKC. Yeah, for sure. For sure. This, this, this league is a tough, tough league. And, um, you know, I don't think there's not one weekend you can take off. There's not one game that you can take off. You can't take off part of a game. Like you've got to be ready to compete from start to finish and then to repeat it again. And, and one more time each, you know, for three times in a weekend, um, to see what the pack did in postseason and get to the world series. I think that definitely motivates our athletes. You know, they, they want to be the ones us as Oregon. We want to be the ones that are at OKC. What was, how long did it take you to adapt to coaching in the pac 12? Like, uh, you know, now we've got like a Megan Bartlett, for example, is in the league. She's the rookie now, I guess, in the pac 12. Uh, what was it like for you as you went through the pac 12, those first few years and, and what you kind of took notes and learned from the being successful in the pac 12? Yeah, it's tough. It's a tough, tough league and it'll, it'll wear you down. Yeah. Um, I think it's just understanding. I, I think softball right now is, is just unbelievable. Like, you know, you're, you're watching us 
you're watching fall games on TV and you're watching early season games on TV. And it's just, it's awesome what our sport is doing. And I, I think that you've got to really understand that if you want to be successful, you have got to be an unbelievable recruiter and you've got to get your team to understand how to be great. Uh, there's, there's just so many different things that you got to do. You got to be able to do it at a, a very high level uh, because of the, because of our sport and, and how much it's taken off. Um, I think back in the day, there was times where um, different matchups where maybe you didn't think you just figured going into the matchup, you should be able to win it, you know, where now that's not the case, you know, um, at all in your league or in regional, super regional, like anybody can beat anyone on any given day. So I think it's constantly learning. How can I, as a coach, um, get my team to really, um, be great at what they do and, or what are, what are, and to be innovative, what are things that I can bring to them along the way? You know, you're seeing the analytics that are happening now in softball that weren't happening before. So our, our sport is pretty awesome. What's the one thing now that you have available to you in the game now that you wish you had available either when you were a player or when you were on Coach Gasso's staff as you were starting in coaching? A lot. Like, it's just amazing <laughs> <laughs> how much, how things have changed. You know, like as a player, I would have loved to be able after a game to pull up all my at-bats. I would have loved as a catcher to be able – to watch video on every single opponent that we are going to play prior, um, you know, to those games. Um, I think of just the, the analytics that you have. I, I just, I'll, there's so many things. It's just, our game has changed so much. And that's why I think our game is so great to look at where we started and then, you know, just how we've continued to get to just, uh, you know, um, I don't know, elevate to. Sure. Yeah, it's, plus, it's been awesome. Plus, there's so much video now with games being streamed and broadcasted that you could watch your opponents, you could watch players across the country. You probably got to be wondering, how the heck did we, like, accomplish what we accomplished pre all this stuff, right? Like, how did you all get by? <laughs> yes, no, for sure. You think about, like, manually doing some, you know, to get certain statistics and manually doing them. Now you put them in the software and it spits them out for you. Like, it's just... <laughs> It's it's amazing like how far our sport has come, but I, I again I just think it's it's unbelievable what um, softball is doing right now and the exposure and just the interest. You know, I you know another thing too I would say is that I think nationally like everybody knows what each other is doing because of all the exposure with maybe more it was like a little more regional and you would hear about some other athletes or teams but you didn't have as much information where now just nationally, you, you know, what's going on across the nation. Couple topics in the sport, January, a big vote coming about an extra assistant, full-time assistant position. This has been talked about for a little while with the volunteer making full-time. It didn't pass a few years ago. Now it's back on. Yeah. It looks like the thinking around the sport, it, it'll pass. It'll affect baseball, softball. What's your thoughts on this? Cause you mentioned earlier about coaches like Mariah and Alyssa. And I think of those coaches that, man, you know, you got a chance to perhaps keep them now full-time and more opportunities for people like them. I I would love for it to pass. I'm really hoping that it will pass. Um, I just think of um, all the, you know, for the most part, you think of, okay, we're here to coach. We've got some paperwork type stuff in the office that we need to do. Like that has just exploded. Like there's so many things things to do and you just don't have enough time or enough people so to get another full-time assistant in here that's that's being paid it just I think will allow us to do so much more and um not be so you know spread so thin um in certain areas so I I'm I'm really hoping it'll pass well especially I don't know if people know and it's not just softball baseball I will I add to that as well the amount of hours you all have to work and, and sort of like, hey, or you have this recruiting trip. There's so much now involved in recruiting nationally and everything like that. There's only so many hours in a day, so many hours in a week. You got to maintain your rosters. I mean, not to pick on other sports, but there's other sports that have tons of assistance with a, you know, not as big of a rosters, for example. So I, I, I kind of feel this has been long overdue. Is it Am I fair in that? Like, I mean, I don't know if people realize the amount of hours you have to put because you're, quote, 
you know, a little bit shorthanded. Not that you're making excuses for it. You knew what you were getting in as coaches, but it is a lot of hours. No, it is a lot of hours. I think, I think all coaches in any sport would just say, would say the same thing. The amount of hours that we spend. Um, I mean, if we got paid hourly, goodness, that'd be kind of <laughs> nice. Right. But, um, but we, we do put a lot of time like into it. And so to have another paid assistant, I think would go a really long way for all of us and allow us to be, you know, are like really good in different areas versus like one of us trying or a couple of us trying to cover everything. So I, I, I think it'll be great for our sport. I think it'll be great for baseball and, and I'm looking forward to see what happens in January. Another thing that's being experimented in volleyball and soccer is they're seeding 32 teams this year. Volleyball, Oregon, in fact, is one of the national seeds in volleyball. Having mm -hmm. a great year, but they're seeding 32 teams this year to create more parity in brackets. Perhaps uh, get rid of some of the predictability. I I'll ask you because you've had the last two years two of the toughest regional assignments imaginable, and many would say maybe didn't really match up with what you should have gotten. Uh, the last couple of years from a seeding. What's your thoughts on it? Would you like to see softball look into that as maybe just seeding the tournament one through 32, and then that way at least you at least know where you stand from a seeding standpoint? Yes, I, I would. I would like to see I would like to see uh, more teams seeded than just the 16. So if we went to 32, um, yes, I, I would be in favor of that. I agree because I just, like I was saying before, it's it um, our sport is so good. You know, I think kind of back in the day, you had certain areas where it would be good, um, where now it's just, it's great across the country. And so I just think it, it takes away that predictability and it takes away, you know, I think all of us have had years where we end up in the same regional or end up playing against the same teams or you see that happen. And so to be able to um, maybe get rid of that a little bit and to be able to go, um, whether you're hosting or, or you're having to go somewhere and that, that would, that would look a little different. And I, yeah. I would be fine with that. Well, I think with, most of them. I think everybody, especially it's really become a national sport. The TV ratings prove that. Uh, I really do think it's time that we kind of look at it as a national tournament. It's no longer a regional, Hey, let's bust as many teams as we can. I don't think that's ever been fair to student athletes. I think you should go where your performance on the field says you should go whether it be hosting whether it be going wherever it shouldn't be decided based on a, a mileage i agree i think you, you think of the you know your body of work and what you've put into each year and you should be rewarded for that and and it shouldn't be well your body of work but then also what regionally it looks like whether it's you know a team getting on a bus or a team flying or whatever so um, and I understand the expenses that go along with it too. You know, there's, there's a lot of things that go into this, but to, to have 32 teams seated versus 16, I, I would be for that. Do you allow, do you even pay attention to where all the college realignment stuff that goes on? Do you block all that out? Like, I mean, I, it affects you to some extent, obviously, so you can't ignore it completely, but what's, what do you react to all the movement stuff? I mean, we're going to have in a few years, Oklahoma is going to be a member of the Southeastern Conference. I mean, who knows what UCLA perhaps going to the Big Ten. I mean, it's kind of wild times now in college athletics. Do you pay attention to it? Do you block it out? What? How do you approach it? Uh, I, you definitely pay attention to it. You know, I think there's still a lot up in the air with it. I don't know if it's all completely done. So I'm just being patient with it to see what, what else is going to happen or what is it going to end up looking like? Um, you know, I hate to see UCLA leave the pack. I don't, you know, you think of the pack and you think of UCLA. That, that's an unbelievable program. So um, I don't want to see them go away from the pack. But do I think, is is it still unsettled? I, I feel like it is. So I'm just, I trust in um, our athletic director. I trust in the Pac-12. I trust, you know, and for them to figure out what is going to be the best thing for Oregon. And yeah. that's, I think, all I can do. Yeah, that's all you could do is just and let, you know, the, whatever happens, happens. You know, some of it you can't control. So it's the deal yeah. there. Your thoughts on instant replay? Uh, you know, now in the postseason, I don't know where to, I don't know where it stands as far as the Pac-12 is going into this season. You can make, ask us, tell us about that. But what's your thoughts on instant replay? Um, I like it. I just, I think our game is so fast that, 
you know, like umpires are trying to get into position and maybe they can't quite get there or, or maybe they are there as well. It just, I, I, I've always been a, a person of let's just get the call, right. Whether it goes for or against me, I just want to get the call, right. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to having instant replay in the pack. Um, you know, I, I, we didn't have it last year. And so, um, going into postseason it's a part of it and it's, it's a little unsettling just because you're not using it all year. So to be able to have it and use it all year and then go into postseason and you've used it all year, I think is important. And you're going to have a PAC 12 tournament. Uh, yes. Coming. What's your thoughts on that uh, now with having a PAC 12 tournament to at the end here? I love it. I love it. I, I think, you know, it's going to allow um, viewers to get a see a weekend of what we deal with weekend and week out. So I, I'm all for it. You're going to start your year out at Puerto Vallarta uh, out in Mexico. Uh, talk to me about playing in that tournament uh, right off the bat, getting your team tested. I think it's a great tournament. I've been there a couple times when I was at Oklahoma. I've been there one other time with Oregon. And um, I, I really love the structure of it. Uh, we stay at a hotel that you basically walk across the street from and walk through the community to your field, which is a vintage field. Um, they get good crowds. You're going to play top teams right out of the gate. So I think you have to be prepared and ready to do that. There's a community service aspect that goes along with it. Our team goes to school and um, we'll work with, the, with these uh, young kids and teach them a little bit about softball. And I think these young kids get to teach us a little bit too. Um, I, um, I I don't know. I, I think there's just so many great things that come from that tournament on and off the field. So I, I'm excited to go there. We have a couple athletes that haven't been there before. We have fifth year athletes that this is their last year. So I think what a cool way to end by going to Puerto Vallarta. Yeah, it's a cool experience. I mean, we forget student athletes. That's part of the experience of being a student athlete, right? Just experiencing mm -hmm. different things. Yeah, for sure. And learning. What's going to be the one, two thick keys? My last question. What's the one or two keys for your team to accomplish your goals this year? Yeah, I think um, you think about what is it? what What's going to be the difference maker for this group? And I think for us as a team, it's just we need everybody. I, I don't think we can just depend on a couple. You know, we're going to have different moments throughout the year where we're going to need somebody to come up big and it's not going to be the same one or two people. It, we're going to have to spread that out um, in, in all areas. And I'm excited because I think we have the personnel to do that. Um, and then I obviously, you know, uh, injury free, it's just avoiding injuries and staying healthy and in continuing to just see us get better every weekend. Um, I think we were going to be facing some top teams, like I said, right out of the gate. And I think it's important to understand how to beat those top teams right out of the gate. So um, I'm looking forward to it. Well, I definitely deal. I feel like you're due for a healthy season. I feel like I, I'm, I'm hoping I don't, you know, we do, if we do in media availabilities to the season, you don't have to give too many medical updates this year, although you did a good job as best you under the circumstances. So I applaud you for that coach, but the, Thanks for taking the time to talk to us. You've always been great to us. And your staff's been great to us as well. We've had both your assistants on and uh, look forward to seeing your team play this upcoming season. And uh, thanks for coming on the show. No problem. Thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to it.